What is going on everyone? My name is Alexis Morgan and today I'm coming to you to explain the foreclosure timeline and process. Homeowners in foreclosure have a very strict and specific timeline and there's pieces of that timeline that will allow you to identify where they are with the bank and where they are mentally and emotionally as a state of mind in such a distressed situation. So let's get right into it. The first, first, very initial thing that happens in this process is what's called pre-pre-foreclosure. What is pre-pre-foreclosure, right? So this is when a homeowner has missed the payment. Maybe they've missed two, maybe they've missed three. It, this, is a, this is a period of time that lasts three to four months. This is when the homeowners are late on their mortgage payments. And the bank, they're getting letters from the bank saying, hey, we noticed you missed your payment. What's going on? How can we help? The homeowner is receiving letters and the bank is reaching out to see what's going on. Now, if nothing happens in this stage, if the homeowner decides not to take action and not to catch up their payments or, or do anything really, what happens next is what we call pre-foreclosure. Now, this part of the process is the one that we're most familiar with, right? I, we're breaking it down today into three parts, very important, three parts of the pre-foreclosure process. The first part is a notice of default. This is when the bank has decided they are going to take action and progress on the foreclosure process. The owner gets served papers, the bank notifies the county, and they pretty much tell the world now that this homeowner is going to be in foreclosure soon. This homeowner is in the foreclosure process. So the very first step is a notice of default letter. Now this is phase one of the pre-foreclosure section of this process. And 30% of people sell in this phase. When they get that letter, they go, oh my God, I can't keep up with my payments. They have the right, right frame of mind and they decide to sell their house right away. In the notice of default phase, this is when we're marketing to sellers, we're texting them, we're door knocking them, we're cold calling them. We're trying to get a hold of the, of the homeowners at slash sellers that have just received the notice that they are going to be, uh, their house is going to be taken away from them, right? They, we need to get in contact with them because they are realizing that the, the deep situation that they're in. So this is when we are marketing to them and trying to get in touch with these homeowners because 30% of people sell right away when they get that notice of default. Okay, so this, this notice of default stage typically lasts 30, 30 days where the homeowner has received the letter, they have an opportunity to take action, and then we go into the next step. The next phase of this pre-foreclosure piece is a head in the sand moment. People who are just gonna do nothing, maybe they're gonna see what options they have, but they kind of just ignore it. They kind of say, oh my God, well, nothing's gonna happen right now, so I'm gonna slide this to the side. So in this head in the sand moment, this typically lasts 90 days and T only only 10% of homeowners in this situation sell in this phase after they've received their default and before the next piece of their of their timeline only 10% sell here and you guys it's important to understand where they're at at this point they're receiving probably 25 to 30 calls a day loan modifiers real estate agents, the mortgage company, other investors, they're getting tons of calls a day in this phase. That's why I, I love door knocking. I love door knocking at this phase to see where they're at, to see if they are gonna be a part of this 30% that's gonna sell. But in this phase, it's very, very hard to get um, a homeowner who's open to selling, who's open to working with you. A lot of times you'll hear, I have it taken care of, Maybe they have a lawyer, maybe they're uh, pursuing a loan modification, but in this phase, they just, they really don't want to hear from you. Um, so I always go for A and C. And C is what um, we'll call 
like an oh shit phase. They're kind of like, oh my god, this is really happening. So in phase C, there is an auction date and a notice of trustee. This is when the bank notifies the county and also puts a publication in the newspaper that there is going to be an auction. All the names of the owners are included, the legal description of the property, where and when the auction will be taking place. It's all public data. The homeowner has one last chance. And this is what's called in the, in the final judgment, uh, all the costs associated with how much is left on the mortgage, the interest on the note, the attorney fees and costs, all of that is calculated in the final judgment. And they give you this, this total in bold letters. I've looked through the county records. It's a total in bold letters. That's usually thousands of dollars, right? And the homeowner has one last ditch chance to save their house. And this is called an equi equitable right of redemption. And the only way to take advantage of that right is to pay off the mortgage in full and any fees and costs associated with that. Now, as you guys can imagine, for a homeowner who, who can barely you know, take care of their mortgage, this is something that's not realistic, it's not reasonable. And this moves us into part three, um, which is the auction. As we move towards part three, the seller becomes extremely motivated to avoid foreclosure. In fact, 60% of sell, 60 of homeowners sell right here before their auction date. So as an investor, right? As an investor looking at this, someone like me, maybe someone like you watching, um, the next step in this process is that the house goes to auction and we'll cover that um, later on in this video. But for me personally, and some of my friends that I know, the best time that we are finding these deals and, and helping these sellers is here and here. We are door knocking here to see who's going to be a part of this 30%, who is in the right headspace to accept their, their uh, accept the fact that they are in a, in a sticky situation, who is ready to accept help here. Like I said before, this is a very hard space to get a deal to find a homeowner who's open to your help. And our last spot is here. These are two sweet spots that we want to be talking to these homeowners who were in um, this process. And like I said, you know, in this, in this phase, the homeowners become extremely, extremely motivated because they are out of options. They either, whatever they tried here didn't work. Maybe they didn't try anything. Maybe they put their head in the sand, but they are out of options um, when it gets to this point. So we really try to help out here and, and see what all options they have. Um, a lot of times what, what's, what sucks is that they don't have a lot of time. Um, and a lot of the, the things that can stop a foreclosure other than selling is you need time. You need time to process a loan modification or, or whatnot. So um, so at the auction, um, this is when investors come together and the property goes up for sale. People are bidding on the property for cash. And the opening bid usually starts at what is owed to the bank. So if and when this property sells at the auction, um, there's an official foreclosure on the homeowner's record, um, and, and that has its own cons, um, usually stays on your record for at least seven years. At an auction, the property is going to go to the highest cash bidder. The tough thing about um, bidding at an auction is that, number one, you must bid on the property without going and seeing it. You don't have any idea what the inside looks like. You don't know about the condition. So you go to the, you go to the auction and you just start bidding on a house you think you want. The second thing that's tough about these auctions and, and being an investor going to bid on these is that you have to have the cash. A lot of times after you win this, um, this bid, this auction, you have to bring that capital within hours of your your winning date so um, it's very quick but it can be lucrative 
because you can get properties for less than what you would pay, you know, on market or, or whatever the case may be. A question that would be lingering in my mind at this point, if I didn't understand the whole process, is what happens if no one can cover what's owed to the bank? What happens if no one bids this, this house up? What happens if it doesn't sell? And to answer that question is the property then transfers, the lender takes over the property and it is now bank owned or REO, which is real, it stands for real estate owned. So I don't know if you guys can see this that well, but once the lender takes over the property, it doesn't sell at auction. The lender, the bank, is going to team up with an REO, real estate owned, asset manager, and then a real estate agent to go and sell the property in its as-is condition at the highest price that they can. Um, typically, they go and list it on the market. There's lists of REO properties all the time out there on, on data, web, data collecting um, sites like PropStream and, and Batchleads and even Flipster, Jerry Norton software. So this is the full process of a pre-foreclosure, foreclosure, foreclosure um, situation. Again, for, from an investor in my shoes, I am very interested in the 30 days when they get their no, notice of default and the 30 days before their auction, auction date. Um, other investors have been very, very successful at these auctions bidding on properties, right? And um, yeah, this is A to Z in this process. Now, in some states, after the auction, depending on the state and depending on the situation, the homeowner does have an opportunity to redeem the property, but that's, that's a video for another day. Um, right now, I just wanna cover the basics and give you guys some information. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you like this structure of video, please let me know, like the video, comment, subscribe. I've never done a whiteboard breakdown before, so I'm really, really excited to continue building this out. Let me know what you guys wanna see next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.